Welcome to Good Libations, which is our show about mixology. I'm a mixologist bartender, Ethel Andrews, and we talked before about how the term mixology is starting to sound a bit of feet and a bit self-important, so maybe I should be known again as a bartender. But either, either one is okay. And we've been doing a tribute again to the British Isles, the United Kingdom, and how they have developed a palette for creating and drinking really good cocktails. And this particular cocktail that I'm going to make is actually based on rum. And of all places, I found this cocktail in a little country inn in Wales on the, Briti on the English border. You might say South um, East Wales. And this is a lovely drink. It's a tropical drink. In fact, in many ways, it's similar to a scorpion but they call it a jungle bowl. And it was invented or created by the bartender in residence at this little inn, and it is truly lovely. And he uses fresh ingredients instead of resorting to mixes, which really impressed me. I thought that was just fabulous and so well-crafted and well-created. Now, this particular drink, again, is based on rum, but it has the addition of some Campari because Campari um, is really popular on the continent. We know it came from Italy, and the British like it as well. And Campari is a unique, one-of-a-kind libation. It is actually made from a secret formula of about 30 or so different herbs and fruits. And it has a bitter orange aftertaste, some nuances of vanilla and cherry and other ingredients, some herbaceous background as well, so it's interesting, it's complex. And it's an acquired taste. In fact, some people don't care for Campari. They're kind of repelled the first time they taste it. But even those who don't care for it in a mixed drink or a cocktail, they usually find it quite lovely and they might not even know it's there. So again, we're going to set about and make the Jungle Bowl, which is AKA Scorpion. Slightly different ingredients, but similar. And this particular drink, we're going to use a chimney glass to pour it into, but I'm gonna use the shaker as a medium to actually shake up the drink and then put it in the glass, put ice in it. Now, we're gonna go ahead and put a bit of ice in it so that when you shake it, it'll remain nice and cold. And we're gonna go ahead and put ice in the chimney glass as well. And we've talked about the issue before of proper ice storage. That if you're going to be making cocktails for any length of time, we want to make sure that the ice doesn't start melting because then it's going to compromise the drinks. It's going to make them watery. So use something to store your ice in optimally a bar refrigerator freezer. But if you can't, you know, a really good ice chest will do the trick. So we're gonna go about making this drink now and first of all, we'll add the rum. And most tropical drinks, of course, are based on rum. So we added our rum. And this is another drink where the British have a real fascination with orge syrup, which is an almond-based syrup. And you could use it for this drink, but I prefer to use uh, a hint of triple sec in it because there's orange juice in this drink and we want to keep that top note of orange there. And then we're going to add our Campari and not an overwhelming amount because this is mostly a tropical drink, not really one that features Campari up front. And then we add pineapple juice to this drink in keeping with the theme of tropical drinks. And the scorpion, in fact, uses pineapple juice. So we add our pineapple juice. And now we're going to add some fresh lime. Taking care to squeeze as much out as we can by hand. Add a bit more.
And then we're gonna add some fresh orange, a decent amount of it, in fact. Gonna go ahead and squeeze it on in. Leaving a spent shell also. Squeezing more in. And as usual, I've drenched my hands, so I'm gonna have to wipe them again. And I'm gonna add a little bit of bartender sugar. You could also use simple syrup. Homemade simple syrup, that is, not commercial, because commercial, um, heaven knows what's in it. Usually high fructose corn syrup, which you don't want. It doesn't take much to boil down sugar and make your own simple syrup, and it is so much better. And I wouldn't exactly say that it's, quote, healthy, but it's healthier than using commercial one. So we're gonna go ahead and shake this up before we dispense it in our nice chimney glass. You can also simply stir this in the chimney glass, but this way there's more uniformity, you might say, of mixing the ingredients if we use a shaker. So now we're gonna go ahead and pour it in. We're gonna to need to add a touch more ice to the drink. And as usual, we're gonna add a touch of a garnish for eye appeal mostly. Get some of that oil out of the actual peel itself. And you can also add um, a maraschino cherry as a garnish if you wish, because it kind of goes with the ingredients because of the Campari in it. And again, this is a tropical drink, so I'm gonna taste the jungle bowl and see how good it came out. Oh yeah, that is quite nice. Really nice, in fact. You can barely taste the Campari, but you note its presence. And you note how it kicked up the drink a bit too. Yeah, this is actually an improvement, in my personal opinion, on the Scorpion, which is a classic. And the Scorpion also utilizes a bit of gin and doesn't use the Campari, but, and usually uses the Orger syrup instead of the triple sec, but I like this concept. This is really good. And as I mentioned before, all of us prefer Cointreau over triple sec. It's better, but it also costs significantly more. And unless you've got deep pockets, you might consider just using triple sec because it doesn't cost as much. And you're still gonna get the orange hints and the overtone in the drink as you should without having to spend the money, you know, using the other. So at any rate, Cointreau is wonderful, but it's also costly. Have to have another sip of this here. Yeah, I was really taken with this drink when I first um, tried it out. And I also was impressed with the graciousness of most of these bartenders and being willing to part with their recipes and their creations instead of treating it as if it were a military secret. That was very gracious and nice, to, nice of them. I usually can deduce what ingredients are in a drink via my palate, but not always. I would not have known that this drink has a hint of Campari. And again, be creative with your drinks, be adventurous, source them from all kinds of places. Don't stereotype areas as not being conducive to cocktail drinking or mixology, because you may be surprised, because I was with the British Isles. And I've got British background on my dad's side, he came from there, but I wasn't expecting this. It's really evolved into quite a destination for cocktails. And thank you again for tuning in to another episode of Good Libations. And as always, let's keep our community safe and well spoken of by drinking responsibly and sensibly. I'm Ethel Andrews, I'm a mixologist. Thank you for tuning in to Good Libations.